All right, guys, it's Monday again. I hope you guys had a good weekend. I had a bit of a roller coaster weekend with Amazon and their seller support, so I thought I'd make a video to show you what I went through to show you how imperfect the world of FBA is, especially seller support. And also, at the end of this video, I will show you how to get your product or account reactivated um, if it's been suspended. So let's kick things off. So imagine a scenario, Friday night, um, just been out for a nice meal, get back about nine o'clock in the evening and find this email sitting in my inbox. So my first thought were, well, I'm not infringing any trademarks. It must be competitors being a pain. Um, but I looked up the trademark and it was for Velcro. Now, I, my products do contain Velcro and I did not realize that Velcro was a trademarked name. So, you know, I hold my hands up, I made a mistake with that. So I thought, okay, fair enough, you know, it's not ideal, but let's, let's see what Amazon said. So it, they tell you why this happened. Obviously someone's made the complaint. We're here to help, of course they are. They're not really there to help. They're there to copy and paste templated responses, but they're not there to help in any way, shape or form. Um, and they tell you how to reactivate the listing. So if you believe this was an error, do this. So I obviously knew it wasn't an error, it was a genuine mistake. Um, or if it's not an error, please modify your product and the product de detail page to ensure they do not infringe on the trademark of the rights owners listed below. Once this is done, email us. The second part of that email just gives you a bit more information how to do it. So basically how to edit your product in Amazon. So I thought, okay, I will do exactly as they've asked. I'll make the changes and I'll contact them and tell them what I've done. So I edited my listing and you would think, you know, you couldn't go too far wrong with this reply. So I said, hi, I have edited my listing with ASIN XXX to resolve the trademark infringement. The listing was using the word Velcro and this has now been removed. I mean, it doesn't get easier than that. Um, but no, Amazon rejected that reply and guess what I got? A templated response with no details um, yet again. So this time around though, they tell me they want a lot more information. So the first thing is they want proof of authenticity, which for most of us will be a copy of an invoice from a supplier. And um, so I also asked my supplier to put a note on that invoice, invoice saying the product does not infringe any trademarks and does not contain Velcro. And then greater detail um, on the various steps here. So what you have to do is put together what they call a plan of action and for each step provide a load of detail as to what you've done. Now, when you've just removed the word Velcro, you know, I used it once in that listing. Um, it's in one of the bullet points. So there's not really a lot I can say. So you really kind of have to just accept that this isn't an ideal situation and work with it as best as you can and just fluff out your response to make it sound as if you've been really proactive and, you know, and you're really gonna make sure this never happens again. And of course, you're very, very sorry. So I thought, right, okay, I'm gonna do a nice detailed plan of action, which I did. So if you wanna read through that, you can you know, pop it on pause. I'll also copy and paste this below. But in effect, you say, what happened? So we've got a, we've got a trademark complaint. Um, why did we get the complaint? Because I used the word Velcro as a descriptive term and did, know, did not know it was protected. I've attached an invoice from the supplier showing it's authentic. Um, and greater details of what have been taken, um, of the steps that have been taken. So I took the step of removing the Velcro from the listing, which there, I actually had it on one of my photos as well. So I took it out of the photo. So there was two areas, as in one bullet point and a, one reference in the photo. So I took out both of those. And then how will I prevent it again? You know, just saying, of course I'll read all the policies and guidelines going, further for, going, going forward. I'll ask my supplier to confirm it doesn't contain any trademark infringement, stuff like that. It's just pure fluff when actually all I did was remove the word Velcro from the listing. So I thought, okay, this will get, you know, you can see this is 11.28 at night um, and you can imagine I was pretty uh, wound up at this point. And then I got this response and the first paragraph sums it up. We cannot accept your appeal because the content of your product detail page has not been modified. Now I know it had, and I left about an hour between um, making the changes and sending the email because sometimes changes don't update instantly with Amazon. So at this point, I was kind of at my wit's end. It's like, what else can I do? You know, I've removed the word Velcro. There isn't anything else I can do. Um, so I thought, right, okay, I'm going to take kind of the nuclear option. So I, I deleted all of the content on my listing. So I deleted the bullet points, descriptions, titles, made a backup, of course, and the images. And then I put in some just very temporary content. So in 15 minutes, I quickly bashed out a very new listing containing none of the old content and then put up a placeholder image, um, which was one of the images I'd actually rejected. So I put up a placeholder image and had a completely changed listing and then sent, sent a, another appeal, this time saying, you can see the extra bullet points I've added, you know, the product title has been removed and replaced. The description has been removed and replaced. The bullet points have been removed, the photo. So pretty much everything that could be replaced, I replaced. And then I copied and pasted the note that the supplier had added to the invoice as well. The people making the decision 
are effectively just covering their own ass. So you need to make it as easy as possible for them to say, yes, I am confident that this isn't gonna come back to bite me, because that's all that employee is thinking. So if they can go in there and see that like, every single part of this listing has been changed, um, then it makes their decision easier, or at least that's what I believe. And thankfully, I woke up the next morning, I sent that email, bear in mind, it was probably about 1 a.m. because there was no chance I was gonna sleep all the time this was going on. So about 1 a.m. I sent this email, then the next morning woke up to, we've reviewed your appeal and reinstated the following content. So you can imagine that was quite a stressful period of time. My listing has been reinstated. So I thought I wanted to share that with you guys and also now talk you through the process of how to get your product or account reactivated because they're very similar. And when I was doing the research into um, kind of what I'd gone through, uh, a lot of people kind of recommended similar advice. So I thought I'd put this all together and hopefully it'll help you guys if you are unfortunate enough but probably are likely to come across this um, if you do start selling on Amazon. So the first thing, and this is the hardest thing, stay calm and try and remove any emotion from the scenario. Now it is very difficult and I was not emotion this Friday night, but stay calm. Um, the second step, do not reply immediately. You know, The first thing you wanna do is just turn around and say, I'm not gonna swear on the channel. Turn around and just say to them, you know, this is, this is silly, <laughs> don't do that. Just give yourself time. Um, to do the relevant research because the chances are someone else would have had this issue before and you know put together a nice detailed reply so the first two steps stay calm remove emotion and don't reply immediately now give yourself an hour two hours to just sit down and formulate a good email response then the next step is to do your research so if you copy and paste the first paragraph from any email chuck it into google you will come you know you'll come across various threads in different forums of people who have had exactly the same issue so you can familiar familiarize yourself with the process find out what they did and stuff like that. So do your research as well before you um, before you reply. After that, get support from other people. So you can contact myself if you're in any Facebook groups. Contact them if you've purchased a course. You know, speak to your mentor. Make sure that you are fully prepared to the you know to produce the best possible reply you can to the email you received. Um, and then the next step, do exactly what Amazon tell you to do, even if you completely disagree with it or it seems completely pointless. Um, and I did do exactly what Amazon told me to do and they still rejected it. So just keep that in mind. It, it is a box ticking process and even then they will sometimes will still reject it, but just keep your call and repeat this process. Next step, ask your supplier to provide an invoice confirming that it's not counterfeit, you know, it doesn't infringe on trademarks or intellectual properties or anything like that. Um, they, will, should, they should be happy to provide that and ask them to put a special note. If, you know, one idea is when you email them, say to them, can you add this paragraph of text to the email so they can put in exactly what you want them to say? And I'm sure they'll say yes. Then this, you don't have to do this. I did this after, the, after my second appeal failed. Um, I replaced every part of my listing temporarily and then over the weekend, I've been slowly putting it back, but I've been rewording everything. So nothing in my listing is exactly as it was before this happened on Friday. So every single um, paragraph, bullet point title has been slightly amended and every single photo I tweaked ever so slightly so it would be a slightly different file size. So if there's any sort of algorithm or bot checking all of this, there will be no exact match. Maybe I'm overthinking it, but for me, I've got my listing reinstated. I don't wanna take any risk that it's gonna be pulled down again. After that, with every email, include your seller ID, complaint ID, trademark number, and ASIN or ASINs that are affected in the email. And the reason for this is at least two or, two or three times when I emailed Amazon back, they replied and said, oh, we don't know which case this is referring to, despite replying to their email. So make sure you include them every time. Um, the next thing you need to do is a detailed plan of action. Now, if you look back to my previous email, you'll see how I broke that down. I'll also put that in the, um, in the description below. So you can copy and paste that and amend it accordingly for your um, for your reply. The other thing is, this is not so much for this individual case, but make sure that you establish a wide range of products on Amazon. You know, Don't have one product that's generating 90% of your income. Obviously, when you first start out, that's gonna be the case, but develop as many products as you can, because if one product gets this issue, and worst case scenario, you can't deal with the, you know, the protection, you can just delete the ASIN and it will be a hit on your profit and you'll lose some stock. I'm sure you can resell them on eBay. Um, but you don't wanna be in the case where you've got one product and that's banned and then you're not making any income. If you've got 10, 20 products live and one of them gets hit with this, it's not the end of the world. You know, you'll be a lot calmer, I'm sure, if you've got 10, 20 products up and only one suspended. So try and make sure your account is as diverse as possible. And uh, finally, don't rely on Amazon 100% for your income. Um, and you know, I think this is why a lot of people that sell courses on YouTube 
do actually sell courses is that they've experienced Amazon firsthand. They've seen how poorly Amazon treats sellers and they don't trust them. I don't trust them. You know, I didn't trust them before this happened and I still don't trust them. And you do feel like you've got a gun to your head with Amazon. At any point, they're just gonna either suspend your product or shut your account. So make sure you've got income coming from other places. Just don't be 100% dependent on Amazon. So if you ever get this email, it doesn't completely destroy your income. So hopefully, you found that useful. Um, you know, it's not an ideal experience to go through, but by going through it, I feel more confident if it ever happens again, I'll be in a much better position to get my product reactivated um, at the earliest opportunity. And if you guys do experience this or similar, feel free to reach out to me. You know, drop me an email, darrenlynchfba at gmail.com. And if you found this video useful, please hit the like button.